going to do is I'm going to make a brief statement to the members of the press and, uh, and then you can make your statement. Um, just remember if you do feel at any time that you want to stop, just say okay. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention please. The family are deeply concerned about the disappearance of Mr Simmons. Mrs Simmons would like to appeal to her husband, if he is watching, to return home. Now, uh, Mrs Simmons does have a prepared statement she'd like to read from. So, Mr. Simmons, when you're ready. John, if you're watching this, we want you to know that we miss you very much and we love you very, very much. <laughs> we need you. you. Okay. You don't have to come here if you don't want to. You sure? I would like to stress at this point, ladies and gentlemen, that we are not looking for Mr. Simmons in connection with the murders of Juliet and Anne Simmons. We simply want to eliminate him from our inquiries. Thank you very much for coming once again, and uh, we will keep you posted as to any developments um, as they transpire. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Now this, as they say, is the big one. Benny Kayang against Leonard Hultz. If you just joined us, you're watching the 43rd World Stare Out Championship Finals. <laughs> Leonard Hultz, he's such a natural talent and incredible to think he won't be 18 until May. And this uh, massive crowd which has turned out today, well, the majority, you have to say, are here to see the youngster from Chesterfield. Um, yes, uh, you've got to feel slightly sorry for the German. Um, I would say almost everyone here wants to see Leonard win and go on to the final. And he has his lucky panda, Dee Dee, with him today. And lots of girls in the crowd with their little pandas too. I read somewhere that his fan club is now 250,000 members strong. And you get a free panda when you join. I mean, he's a, he's, he's a, he's a hero to the young, isn't he? He's the sort of man that uh, will get young people looking at staring and saying, yes, I want to stare. In my line of work, you have to be on your toes. There's a new challenge every day, and that's the way I like it. I enjoy having fun, although every now and again, my body lets me down. But now I've discovered Elaine and Mason's misters. They absorb liquid and they don't catch fire like Jake hats. Because they suck in air and trap it. And best of all, because misters are made of foam, they gradually regain their shape and don't shred or tear. <laughs> Elaine and Mason's misters don't let your body let you down. Balu. We have captured the escaped slaves in Sector G, Excellency. Throw them into the pits of fire. Even the woman? No. Have her sent to my chambers tonight. Anything else? Yes, Excellency. We have a new world for you to destroy. A filthy little planet they call... Ah. <laughs> Excellent. Now leave me. Um, hi. Um, oh god, I can't remember what I was calling now. Um, Here, you can just get a pen handy. I'm afraid that woman you wanted sent to your chambers was executed. 
Sorry about that, but I've got the number of an escort agency here. Um, 876-555-2122. Sorry about the mix-up, but... Just to let you know, we've got a football match on uh, Wednesday night and a couple of lads are going out for a drink afterwards, so uh, I'll try and you later. But if not, we're done. Oh. Oh, fucking hell. Inky Winky Dipsy La La Oh Rubbish Rubbish <laughs> Stupid man Next on channel 2, Cindy Crawford takes us through some of her favourite bras. <laughs> Sire, we've captured Prince Morgon attempting to leave Clymere. Throw him into the pit of ice. <laughs> <laughs> Just up there, look, 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 look. Where? Between the two, see that rock there and the one at the top, right between it. Which rock? Between. Which rock? The two. No, I can't see. Yeah, Where? just look, look, look. <laughs> I can see it. Look. Where? There, follow my finger, it's there. Yeah. No, where? Come, come, come where? a bit closer, under there. Yeah. There. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just see the top of the head. Oh. Fantastic. Look, there's a little one down there. Oh my god, look. She's so cute. She hasn't, got, she hasn't developed the full. No, no, she hasn't, has she? No, yeah. Oh, my god. It's fantastic, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah, she's going to have breakfast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's <are> you? <laughs> Let's just take a closer look, David, at the uh, man who's had a street named after him in his native yes. uh, Santiago, mm, Benny Kayang. Benny Kayang doesn't get much better than that, John, does it? <laughs> uh, how many people can you say have got a street named after him? No, he's a giant. He's a giant of staring. There is a, a slight question mark over his temperament, um, because he does tend to... Um, court controversy and uh, only last year he got involved in an altercation at a petrol station with um, with somebody over some um, unleaded petrol or something I don't know what the, what the details were but he hit somebody and uh, quite hard apparently and uh, the man needed stitches and his his jaw rewiring but anyway uh, Benny's done his time for that he um, he actually gave stare out lessons to street children in Santiago by way of a punishment there so um, there's a silver lining in every cloud John Today's match officials, Ken Todd and Brian Featherhead. So, how have you both been since the last session? Well, we, uh, we did have one quite major argument last week, I have to admit that. But, um... We got over it. Good, good. And what about the sexual side? How's that been going? Well, I think 
There's been a bit of an improvement. Did you try my suggestion about making love in places that you wouldn't normally...? Yeah, well, um, uh, we tried it behind a supermarket, actually. <laughs> How was that? Well, it's a bit of a bad smell from the bins. Yeah, it was a really stank. <laughs> and, um, found the metal bits in the bins stuck into my flesh. Yeah, it's a bit grubby around there. <laughs> Some uh, crisps got inside my jeans. What flavour? Flavour. <laughs> we uh, don't know. It's a bit embarrassing, actually. Uh, got interrupted. So there was people what, watching you. There was um, an old couple. Yeah, and a dog. <laughs> I had to run away. So your, your breasts probably would have been bobbing up and down. Yes. When the breasts bob up and down. Oi! 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 Professor Hicks, you're still here. You know it's almost midnight. I know, Janet. You just, um, you go on home. I'm, I'm nearly finished here. Okay. Good night, Professor. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Well, they say rest is the best thing. Yes. When they think they'll move you to a private room. Hopefully the weekend. There was a problem. Somebody messed up on the private insurance. Mm. Need to get that sorted out. Has your dad been to see you yet? No, no. We're just going anyway. Um, ma'am, Sandra, this is Rolex, ruler of the planet Tharsus. Rolex, this is ma'am, Sandra. Hi. Hello. Sorry, I, I didn't catch the name. It's Rolex. Oh, I like the watches. <laughs> He gets that all the time. Well, we'll be off now anyway. <laughs> bye bye then. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Nice to meet you. Bye bye. Your sister's nice. Mm. <laughs> So, how did you, um... I just slipped on the little mat that goes around the toilet. Mm. Jennifer was telling me that Porsus from the Wongol galaxy was reaching up for some sparkling water last week and uh, did his back in. Mm. Mm. I've got a get well card for you from the people of Zordon. Mm. They only signed it because they are scared. No, no, they wanted to. Okay. Yes. The roses. Yes. Look at that. Get well S wish. Sending you a get well wish. And everybody signed it, look. Mm. There's just a smiley face there. Oh, yes. <laughs> but, uh, they left the price. I know, but, you know, they're simple folk. <laughs> I think I've got diabetes. <laughs> I was reading this, uh, this pamphlet in the waiting room and I think I've got some of the symptoms. Go. OK. 
okay. Thanks for coming. Oh, it's okay. You get well. Get well. Thank you for coming to see me. No problem. Take care. That was a great race. You must be very happy. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I feel good. It was a good race and a good time. And uh, I put in the time and it paid off today. So, yeah, I'm pleased to... Something happened to you five years ago. Can you tell us the story of uh, what happened? Yeah, uh, I was on a fun run. I'd done a lot of running since I was a kid with my dad. He was in an athletics club near us and that's how I got into it. But on this fun run, uh, I was given the, the costume to wear and... I wore it and uh, it was a long run, it went very well, but after the run um, I couldn't t take it off. Uh, so it's, it's hard because um, the, uh, there's no nails so I can't remove the head and uh, there's, a, there's a very thick zip at the back, it's very hard to reach and then I've no way of opening it anyway. So uh, now I have to wear it. Constantly. How has this affected your life? Well, it has been hard. I've, I'm coming to terms with it all the time, and uh, it is hard. But I've adapted my life, and so it's not as bad as it could be, really. Do you not have anyone who can help you out after the costume? Not close friends, no. Nature, Brother Gregory, is there any greater proof of God's munificence? How complex are his works, Brother Gregory? How complex? The veins of a leaf, the filigree pattern of... Uh, someone's throwing a Johnny in the river! Are they? Out of my way! You! Get me a drink! <laughs> you laugh, Burgess. Why? Well, I have seen many like him. A few advertisements, a hologram on a bank card, and they think they are the greatest Shakespeare look-alike that has ever lived. <laughs> but there has only ever been one true master. Ah, yes. Portaccio. Yes. Portaccio. I have heard it said he bore a likeness to the bard that was truly extraordinary. Aye, from every angle, he was the very image of England's greatest playwright. He really, really looked like Shakespeare. <laughs> I heard that, old man. That is all one hears these days from your generation. Portaccio, Portaccio, Portaccio. <laughs> Tell me, what was so great about this Portaccio? <laughs> what was so great about Portaccio? <laughs> Didn't think much of that fucking King Lear. <laughs> no, you are mistaking me for another. I am Portaccio. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry, it's just... You look just like him. He does, doesn't he? And that, my friend, is why Portaccio was so great. Gah! So, whatever happened to Portaccio? Ah, he was playing with his nephew's cat, Claudius, 
when the beast dug its claws quite savagely into the skin surrounding his testicles. A month later, he died in agony. Cats have dirty claws. Excuse me, I... Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought... <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for time is of the essence. So I have the young lady's watch in the silk handkerchief. I'll wind it up a bit, I think. Was it an expensive watch, madam? It's quite expensive. Was it a very delicate watch, madam? It's quite delicate. Would it be able to withstand a sharp blow to a table, do you think? Uh, no. Let's see. <laughs> I thank you. Big round of applause for Julie. Excuse me, could I have my watch back, please? Of course. I wonder where it is. I think it might be in your pockets. Have a look. I don't have any pockets. Of course you don't. I'll put my thinking cap on. Do you know, I think it might be in my pocket. Have a look. That's it, in, in. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dan the Dan the hill. Ow, my oh, fingers sorry. aren't in right. Oh, sorry. Mm. You won't be able to go down the hill on the bike if your fingers aren't in right, are you? Mm, Where are we going? Me. Where are we going? Down the hill. Where? Down the hill. Where? Down the hill. Where? <gasps> Hands on the handlebars and just look straight ahead. And tomorrow you'll be riding a two-wheeler. You ready? Here we go. <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> just fine. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, we're pedalling and we're pedalling. Just look straight ahead. Relax, you're going to be fine. You're riding a bike, here we go. <laughs> okay, that is with you. Just keep your feet on the pedals, keep looking straight ahead, straight ahead, keep looking. That's good. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you lifted it? Okay. There we go. Ready? I reckon that'll do it. Okay. Does that feel good? Yeah. Yeah? Mm. Does that feel safe? Yeah. Way. That's it, that's it, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Keep going, keep going, good boy, good boy, good boy, well done. Well, oh, okay. Oh, never mind, never mind. All right, well, you've done that, you've gone on fire. You've gone on fire. That's what we'll do, we'll try again, and this time, try not to go on fire. I think that would be the best. But it was good though, it was the best you've done so far, I'd say. Pretty good. Whoa! I think it's worth mentioning, John, that uh, Kayang is still the holder of the world record for the longest period without blinking. Two days, 10 hours, 56 minutes and 45.89 seconds. Oh, goodness me. A real marathon session, that. Must have been pretty hard to get the edited highlights out of it, too. Um, but that's actually very different from staring, isn't it? Yes. Suzanne, you're still in the chance, yes? I want you to focus, focus, focus. Don't look at me, don't look at the people. Just concentrate on the moment you are in and then go out and kill them, yes? <laughs> Feeling good? That was Justine Davis, who gets an eight and a nine. Next to compete tonight, Suzanne Uppingham. Come on, Suzanne! Come on, Suzanne! <laughs> 